So, hey guys, um, you know, welcome to my review of Batman Beyond Unlimited issue number two. And the last issue of Batman Beyond um, Unlimited, um, like I said, there are two unique storylines here. We have one story dealing with Terry McGinnis as Batman, and the other one dealing with him and Justice League Beyond. So you get two stories for the price of one comic, which is really great. Um, now, let's talk about Terry McGinnis as Batman um, for the first storyline, what happened, you know, in the last issue. This is that, you know, there's this plan for all the Jokers, who are actually imitations of the Joker, who wear just clown clothes, they're not really Joker in general, just Jokers. Um, they're just mediocre gangs. Um, and they're gathering in Gotham City for some odd reason. And there's a you know, a leader to this whole entire, you know, group of Jokers, um, who is actually, you know, devising this whole entire plan. Um, and I didn't spoil, you know, who was the, you know, um, the main leader um, in the last issue, but hopefully you guys read issue number one already. So I'm going to tell you guys that Doug, Dana's brother who just got out of jail, is the leader who is actually devising this whole entire plan for the Jokers to meet in Gotham City. So that's what happens in the, um, in the first issue of Batman Beyond for Terry McGinnis as Batman. Um, so as for the Justice League Beyond storyline, uh, we didn't see much really happen. We just saw, you know, the Justice League Beyond fighting um, the Joker gang, Joker's gang, um, and uh, fighting, you know, the Splicer gangs. And that's pretty much what happens. And then we see like a little snippet of Bizarro's family, I guess. You get Bizarro woman and Bizarro boy. Um, and then we just see like, you know, Micron, uh, one of the people who are actually, you know, in the Justice League Beyond team. Um, went rogue and is actually working for um, the Cobra gang. And that's basically it. And they just want to solve the mystery of why he's doing this. So, yeah, let's get on to the review after I did that recap right there for you guys. So, in Terry McGinnis' Batman storyline, um, you know, you open up with Mad Stan. Um, but before Mad Stan appears, um, you have, like, these three Jokers from London trying to, you know, buy these bombs off this, you know, off these terrorists or buy these weapons off these terrorists. And, of course, you know... They don't agree on their terms, and of course the Jokers just want to take it. They don't have the money to buy the bombs, so they try to steal it from this guy. But what happens, you know, Mad Stan, um, you, like I said, you might have to have prior knowledge of who Mad Stan is, but I don't really think you really need that much prior knowledge. Um, he's just typically this, this really, this, I guess you can say he's a teenager, maybe in his 20s. Um, he's just really upset at the government. You know, he doesn't like the government, he doesn't like how they're, you know, dealing with the world and whatnot. So he technically just generally hates, you know, the governments, thinks they're fascist, you know, whatnot. So, um, yeah, that's why they call him Mad Stan, because he's always really upset at them. So, you know, he appears and, you know, gets in between um, the Jokers and the terrorists, because the terrorists used to supply him with the bombs, because because that's what he does, he blows up things. Um, and, you know, that's pretty much what happens at the beginning of the storyline, and really not much happens besides saying that, oh, they thought Mad Stan was dead because, you know, Hush, and actually Hush is part of a old story called, um, I think, Hush Returns. Um, I think it was in the in an old Batman um, Beyond storyline that they just started off with before starting this series, so check that out too. Um, and then that's basically what, all that happens, that's it, you know, they just say that, oh, we thought that you were dead, and, you know, he's not really dead, he just went to go see his mother, because he was on vacation. But after that, um, we see from the news that, um, Wayne Tech Industries, or Wayne Inc., is actually supplying, um, better techno technology for the police department. So, you know, um, Wayne, or Bruce Wayne, um, you know, who is in charge of the Wayne Company right now, um, is actually supplying, you know, better weapons, better suited weapons for, you know, um, the cops and police departments in Gotham City because, you know, when he was Batman, he had better technolo technology than, you know, the police department, you know, he was able to take out villains that, you know, the police department was never able to take out, and he was always one step ahead of them. Um, so now he feels like, you know, it's time for him to give back to those police officers because he felt like before, you know, the police officers, you know, that Commissioner Gordon was handling were corrupt, so he couldn't give them that kind of technology or they would go crazy and ballistic with them. So he decides, you know, now it's time to give them back because, you know, what Commissioner Gordon tried to start to do with was, you know, make good cops instead of bad ones, um, you know, um, 
Barbara Gordon's doing that now, so he feels like, okay, it's time to give them um, some good technology so they can actually fight back instead of just, you know, really not do much. Um, and after that, we are actually introduced to two characters, very interesting characters, and I was very excited to see them. One being um, Lucius Fox Jr. If you guys don't know who Lucius Fox is, he's like the guy who's um, part of um, the Wayne Tech Company, you know, before he was, you know, you know who he is. He's, um, he was in the Batman movies. Um, he's actually in the Batman, the animated series. He's like, um, I guess you're the co-executor, um, of, you know, Wayne Tech Industries. And he helps, you know, Bruce Wayne, um, produce his products, manage everything and whatnot. So he's coming back. This is his son. Um, after that, we are introduced to another really interesting character, Tim Drake. Yes, sir. Tim Drake is here. And I was so happy to see him. Um, but I'll get, get more into them later. Um, so he hired Lucius Fox Jr. and Tim Drake to handle, you know, the police department, you know, department business, um, which is really interesting. So it's good to see that he hired those two. Um, and after that, um, there's a call and actually Terry McGinnis does a Batman move on Bruce Wayne himself. Um, once he gets the call, he disappears right away. And Bruce is like, nice. You know, he pulled off that old Batman trick on Batman, which is cool. And after that, you know, he goes and sees like, you know, the same terrorists fighting against Mad Stan again. And then he just goes and intervenes, you know, against them, in between them. Um, you know, he stops Mad Stan, lets the terrorists run away. And then in the end of the issue, it actually ends up on a funny note, um, is that, you know, Matt Stan's like, did you know what they did? Did you know what they did? They stole Boom Boom. Boom Boom is actually his pet dog that he cherishes a lot. They stole Boom Boom and he was all like, oh, if they lay a, f uh, a hair on him, I am going to blow them up. And that's how they end the issue. And I thought that was funny. Really, really funny. I'll talk more about this issue after I'm done doing the review. But yeah, after that, um, we have the Justice League Beyond series. So, Batman, um, Batman of uh, Barda, um, Warhawk, Superman, and Green Lantern on, on uh, are on Dinosaur Island trying to infiltrate Cadmus Lab while Awkward Girl is at the Watchtower, um, you know, visualizing and analyzing everything around the island, um, you, know, main, you know, monitoring uh, what they're doing. So they enter Cadmus Labs and they're attacked by a bunch of Lex bots because Lex used to own the facility. And after that, um, they stumble upon this room with these humans in, you know, these test tubes. And, you know, Batman states that, is this kind of some kind of trophy room and whatnot? So they try to walk around, try to, you know, investigate the whole entire room until Micron appears. And he knocks over a couple of these, you know, fluid test tubes and they create these parasite creatures that starts to attack um, the team. And after that, you know, Batman goes off on his own. Um, and Micron is trying to steal this this box in Cadmus Labs. But, you know, once Batman reaches him, he tries to, you know, take him back with the team. But he, you know, Micron triggers, uh, like, this alarm system and explodes Cadmus Labs. Everything goes up in, you know, flames and whatnot. But, you know, the Green Lantern, you know, protects everybody with his, you know, protective uh, construct. So everybody's okay. But Batman and Micron disappeared somewhere else. Hmm. They actually disappeared um, or teleported to... Um, Cobra's other secret base or something like that. So, in short summary, um, Micron gives them the box that he stole, and so far he proves himself worthy to be a part of Cobra, I guess. And then in the end, um, Terry's suit uh, actually runs out of battery. He has no more juice because he wasted it all on his cloaking and uh, latching his feet onto um, Micron's uh, transporter to, you know, transport to the, uh, the base. So he's running out of batteries and running out of juice, and then he gets attacked by Micron and while he's trying to uh, contact um, the Justice League Beyond. And everybody's wondering where, he, uh, of course, Batman is. But afterwards, you know, after a little bit of a tussle with him, he turns on his suit, electrocutes Micron. Micron, you know, gets knocked out. He sticks him into his belt. And later on, this is Lady... Or somebody that says, um, you know, help me or something like that. So, of course, uh, Batman comes back into, um, you know, the Watchtower and he brings back Micron. He brings back somebody called Amanda Waller. Uh, Amanda Waller. We see her get introduced. Now, we all know who 
Amanda Waller is, or the Waller name, is she was the person who created the Suicide Squad, who is actually currently commanding the Suicide Squad right now in the New 52. Uh, but now she's implemented into the Justice League Beyond storyline. Uh, and that's basically pretty much it, what's going on um, in Justice League Beyond. And it's just it's to be continued. We're going to see what's going to happen next with Cobra and how Justice League is going to deal with Micron and whatnot. So, yeah. I pretty much did like both storylines. Now let's get into the first um, bit of this storyline. Oh, and I neglected to mention that Douglas is moving out of his family's house. His father talks to him and tells him that, you know, you've get, you know, gotten back to talking to your Joker gang friends. I don't want you talking to them. You know, you were in jail and you're off your medication. So, you know, he should go, you know, if you're living under my roof, you got to live under my rules. So, you know, he tries to, t you know, tries to, command um, Doug to do his things, and Doug's shaving his head, but in the end, you know, he punches his dad in the face and tells um, Diana, or Dana, that he's moving out of the house, and that's kind of creepy, but we know he's the whole big leader of the Joker's gang, um, so of course, he's gonna move out somehow. Uh, in the end, I did like this issue, it was really fantastic. The first part, okay, when I first read the first storyline with Batman, uh, with Terry McGinnis' Batman storyline, I didn't like it as much because, of course, you know, you know, Mad Stan. He's just a funny, goofy character that's mad at the whole world. He's mad at the whole entire government. He's just a funny character. But I didn't really think that first part was really necessary. But, okay, whatever. I, I look past that. But afterwards, when they were introducing Lucius Fox and Tim Drake, ah, that piqued my interest because um, Terry mentions one thing. Don't you think Tim doesn't want to work for you or get anywhere near you after his last incident of how, you know, when he was being, you know, being Robin, you know? He doesn't want to get near you. Now, you're going to have to get prior knowledge to what happened to Tim, you know, why he quit being Robin. Well, I'm going to tell you guys because some of you guys might not even know this. Um, watching uh, the Joker Returns for the Batman movie, what happens is that the Joker brainwashes Tim Drake and turns him into a Joker Jr. In the end... You know he does have a Joker persona, and in the end of the uh, in the end of the storyline, um, what ends up happening is that Tim Drake kills the Joker, and he's scarred for life. You know he's insane. He has his mental insanity in his head because you know he's still kind of like scarred for life of what the Joker did to him and how he actually killed the Joker. Something, you know, Batman never wanted anybody to do was kill, and Tim Drake did that. So that morally scarred him for life, and that's what made him quit being Robin. And, of course, um, in the movie, actually, he doesn't want to have anything to do with Bruce whatsoever. He doesn't want to talk to him. He doesn't want to have anything, any contact with Bruce whatsoever. Nobody does. Actually, in the whole Batman storyline, um, Dick Grayson, Barbara Gordon... And Tim Drake does not want anything to do with Batman whatsoever, you know, because they, they, you know, re they hate him for what they did to, uh, to them, you know, made them their sidekicks, ruined their life, you know, f made them wear costumes and fight crime and whatnot. They resent him for that. But yeah, that's just prior knowledge. But I generally speaking really like this sto um, this storyline, even though it didn't really have to do much with the Joker storyline that's happening right now with a thousand Jokers whatnot. It really didn't have much to do with just introducing, you know, Mad Stan and um, just having Bruce actually suit up the police department for the, you know, whole big gang war against the Jokers. It was pretty interesting. I really liked that. And it was pretty funny seeing Mad Stan come along here. Um, speaking of the Justice League Beyond storyline, it got better, okay? I mean, in the last issue, we just saw some action scenes. Really not much really happened, you know? Um, but generally speaking, a lot happened in this issue. Um, now we really want to know what's going on with, you know, Cobra. You know, we know Cobra actually is a big gang that has to deal with in the whole entire Batman universe. Uh, or Batman Beyond universe. Cobra is a really, really, really big villain in this, you know, universe. So they were planning to do something because, you know, um, in Batman Beyond, they try to turn the whole entire world into... Um, lizards or whatnot or whatever, you know, they, they did a lot of messed up things um, and they tried to take over Gotham City um, and then we want to figure out what does Amanda Waller have to do with any of this and also speaking of what's going on with Micron, so so far there's a lot of questions but a lot of good questions to be answered in the next couple of issues which will probably be answered, you know, what's Cobra's plan, why is Amanda Waller 
you know, held captive for some reason at first, um, what she has to deal with the Batman Beyond storyline or Cobra, or in way uh, Micron was helping Cobra in the first place. Very interesting and very interested to see what's going to happen next. So, um, yeah, both storylines are really great. I highly suggest you picking this issue up, even if you didn't really like issue number one. I still suggest you guys pick that up. I mean, come on. Batman Beyond is a great, great story. I mean, the animated series was awesome. The first, you know, the first series was really good. And this series, not doing that, you know, it's not doing that bad, you know. It's doing pretty good. I really like this Batman Beyond Unlimited series, and I hope you guys are still picking this issue up. It's really fantastic, worth your four bucks, um, because you get two stories in one. Come on, you can't pass that deal. It's really great. Um, I really like this issue. Still love the art. Still the same thing as issue number one. You know, both artists are still doing a great job drawing each story. Um, so, yeah, really great story, really great art. Very good pickup. So hopefully you guys check Batman Beyond Unlimited issue number two out. And hopefully you find this review enjoyable and helpful. And hopefully you guys like this video. So yeah, um, that's about it for my reviews. So next up I might talk about my thoughts on Harley Quinn's origin stories in Suicide Squad. Because I just picked that issue up and I read it. And I'll probably give you my impressions on what I thought about their origin story for Harley Quinn. So yeah, see you guys later.